I'll be blunt, it's trash right now. How does that work? That's kind of strange. I've been hit by it a few times and it will knock you flat. I don't want to risk Henry touching that. Hi there, yo folks. I gotta be honest, it's been, it's been a week. <laughs> it's been an interesting week. I started my part-time employment, my part-time job this week. It was a little more hectic and busy than I thought it was gonna be. There was more to do. My, my time was, was more scrambled than I counted on it being. To be expected when you start a new job. Uh, you're learning the ropes, you're kind of getting, getting a sense of things. That being said, it did go well. Give it another two or three weeks and I think I'll be fully ramped up and a lot more confident with my time and my time management. But this first week was, it was a challenge. Let's put it that way. But I, I'm, I'm excited for this, this kind of new arrangement. I think it'll be good in the long run. That leaves me a little short-handed this week. Um, as you can hear, you may be able to hear, there's been a light rain on and off this morning. And that's been the story this week. It's been pretty gloomy uh, for most of the week. So my time outside between ramping up at the new job and the rain has been somewhat limited. The clock is ticking. It's T minus, I think, nine days until our first round of chicks hatch. Uh, these are gonna be barnyard mixes, layers. Um, various breeds that Katie Kramer gave us and we're very excited about them. Um, so I need to get the brooder set up ASAP because before I know it, week and a half, those chicks are gonna be here, they're gonna be hungry and they're gonna be looking for a home. <laughs> they're gonna be looking for a place. So this is the brooder room, I need to get the brooder set up. There's a couple other things I wanted to show you guys. Out in the garden because that's our next big project and out in the back because dad's been doing some pretty crazy work back there in terms of clearing that back pasture. And I want to get a before picture because before I know it, things will be all cleared away and I'll have never got a good comparison shot between how things look now and how things will look when he's done with them. So I need to get back there and get a comparison shot. The other thing I wanted to talk about was the stall next to me. I've got some plans fomenting for that. I'm thinking about pigs. I'm thinking about breast chickens, about meat chickens. And I've got some ideas I'd like to run by you guys. <clears throat> but before we do any of that, we need to set up the brooder, so let's get to it. Heat lamp, I'll hang there for right now. As many of you know, I have used this stock tank as my kind of brooder central for a couple of years now, and it's been very effective. Done exactly what I needed it to do. I've never had, I think the most chicks we've had in here at one time is 30 when we had our meat batch, our meat chicken batch a few years back. That was a lot of chickens to have in here. And as you can imagine, this stock tank couldn't hold them for very long. We moved them out within two or three weeks, and I, f I forget exactly what we did. I think we put them directly into the A-frame, but 
Regardless, if I have anything less than 15 chicks, this is perfectly fine for a few weeks for them. So with the next batch of 12, here's hoping we actually get 12 healthy chicks. This will be a good home for them once they hatch. I'm using pine shavings here as kind of the substrate for them. The one thing that people tell me not to use is cedar chips, and I forget the exact reason why. Uh, but I've used these pine chips now, or these pine, this pine shavings now for a little while, and it seems to do the trick pretty well. It is a little bit on the, the small side. I may like... The next time I buy a bag of, of bedding for the chicks, I may get something a little bigger because there's a fear that they'll eat too much of the pine shavings because they think it's food. It's so small, but I've done a couple batches of chicks now in the pine shavings and they've been generally pretty good. Let's spread this out. I shouldn't need too much at first. If the chicks live in here for a few weeks, I should only need to change it a few times. Generally, I try and change the shavings once a week. I think that's a good base layer. Next thing I wanna do is get some cinder block pieces to serve as flat spots to put the food and water. Let me do that now. So I like to put these just flat pieces of cinder block, broken up cinder block to serve as a good platform for my water, my food. Now, obviously I'm gonna clean my water, my little chick water waterer and feeder but that's just to give you a demonstration of what it'll look like in here i want it raised up off the off the uh, bedding somewhat because if i don't then it'll just get clogged up and dirty and pooped on so raising it up a little bit just just keeps it out of the out of the chick's feet and the bedding and so that's why i have these in Next up, I want to talk about the heating. I've used two methods to keep the chicks warm. One is this heating panel, this brooder panel. Basically, you plug this thing in, and it's got a switch with two heat settings. One is brooder setting, and one is heater setting. I think the brooder setting is meant for, obviously, brooding chicks out. It's a little less warm than the heater section, uh, the heater setting, which is meant to warm up an area, a small contained area. So I've always set it to the brooder setting, and I'll just set this down here. It's actually a perfect fit. And the chicks will go under this. You can actually change the height of it. And the chicks are smaller, you, you make it closer to the bedding. And the chicks will just crawl under here like they would crawl under their mama, their mama hen when they want to get warm. So that's one method for heating. There's your good old trusty heat lamp, which the way I will set this up, I'm not going to do it right now, but the way that I'll set this up is off of this convenient post. Can you see it? off of this convenient post right here where I'll zip tie this assembly and wrap the cord around to where it's hanging either in the tank or slightly above the tank and it'll keep them plenty warm. So I, I've, I've never used both methods at once. I, I suppose if it got really, really super cold, I could. Either one of the methods on their own has been more than enough to keep the chicks warm. Speaking of warm, it's getting warm out. I don't know why I'm wearing this, this sweater. Finally, we've got the cover, which a lot of people have asked me about, how are you gonna keep the, the chicks safe? You have them in this brooder room out in the barn, there's gonna be mice, or there's gonna be rats, and raccoons, and other assorted critters that'll want a piece of them. Chicken nuggets, obviously. So I made this door a few years back. Let me show you what it looks like. So I cut half of a door as the bottom piece, and then I created this kind of swivel, this swivel section right here to give them air. Or if I want to drop the heat panel, I'd put it on the hardware cloth here. So, so essentially what I'll do is I'll have something waiting down that end and something waiting down that end. And they're completely self-contained. There's no animal getting in here. I've used this method uh, to great success now for a few years. Not very hard to do. You just cut a door in half build a little frame out with hardware cloth and hinge it hinge it onto the door panel and voila you got yourself a, a lid for a stock tank brooder and it's it's served me quite well for these past few years that's basically it that's the whole setup the one kind of x factor in the years past has been the wind that just kicks through and blows stuff around blows the the heat lamp and the drafts end up kind of whipping through the room and even getting down into the stock tank now that won't be a problem with the steel panels up on the side of the room here so i think i'm in good shape to have this be my official brooder room like i said there's some things in here i want to clean up this is ready for chicks obviously i need to get food for them probably keep them indoors for two or three days after they hatch but then after that I'm moving them in here and they'll be plenty comfortable in here no matter what the temperature is outside because they're not getting wind and they're they'll have a constant temperature in their brooder tank 
Real quick, I want to take you to the back pasture and show you some of the hard work that Dad's been doing. It's pretty incredible, and like I said, I think it's worth at least capturing a before image. I should have done it before day or before this week because he's already made considerable amount of work. I know it's a project that I've been wanting to do for a while and we've kind of picked at it here and there, but these past few days he has been a wild man back here. So maybe I can show you an aerial shot of how things look back here. This area right here, we'd like to essentially clear this out so we have one big open pasture. There's several different kind of mini pastures back here that are split up by the woods. But there's one big kind of central pasture that's, I don't know, maybe two and a half acres or so that's split off by this brush that you see here in these old trees. There was one tree that fell down a couple weeks back, no, a couple months back. Dad has been diligently chipping away at it and now it's gone. This whole area is clear right here. Just last week, there was a fallen tree here, a fallen dead tree. And so dad's chopped the thing up, cleared the brush away. We're building more burn piles back there, but look at this, this is open, this is open pasture now. What's next? We're gonna cut this thing down. We're gonna bring the tractor back down and hopefully knock the rest of this, this kind of junk, this junk brush here. We're also gonna knock this tree down as well. And finally, this cedar right here that's commingled with another tree. There's like two trees growing in the same exact spot. They're symbiotic or romantic or whatever. Right there, it's a cedar. And then as you can see, there's some sort of uh, non-coniferous tree that's growing up next to it. How does that work? That's kind of strange. And it looks like the, the one tree is growing here and the cedar is growing right there. That's kind of odd but it's also coming down. So once that, pro once that project is done, we'll have all of this area cleared out. What we do in the pa back pasture, TBD. There's these woods back here, these pine trees, which we wanna hold on. Now beyond those pine trees, we have more pasture. We wanna keep, we wanna keep some woods back here. I think it's important to have some wooded land. We've got 11 acres. We'd like at least four or five of those acres to be wooded maybe three acres to be wooded. We will clear out more of the underbrush here, but it's exciting. So if nothing else, I wanted to get a before shot because I think this is gonna look really cool when we clear all this out and have open pasture. I'll be blunt, it's trash right now. The soil is low, there's weeds that we have to deal with, there's giant crazy ant hills. It's just a winter's worth of neglect. It has a lot of potential as well. We've done good things with this garden. For better or for worse, it's produced a lot of food for us, and so we intend to keep it that way. But there's a lot of things we need to do within the next two months to prep and get ready. So I'll give you a quick little primer on what our plan is. I'm not gonna talk about the actual things that we're gonna plant today in this video, um, but you can assume it's the regular suspects, the potatoes, the greens, the tomatoes, the peppers. We may skip squash this year just to give a year off from the squash bugs. That's something we're considering. Haven't quite made our decision on that yet. First thing we're gonna do is, well, let me real quick, I laid down this stuff last year to try and prevent the Bermuda grass from growing up. As you can see, that has not happened. The Bermuda grass is back as strong as ever, and maybe even a little bit angry that we tried to suppress it. <laughs> so one year we did living lanes where we just took the weed whipper and kept the, kept the grass down. That's what we're gonna do again. I will say, Nana Jana helped us with this. We, we were very careful about weed whipping the grass around the garden bed so it wouldn't grow in. And that's generally been the case. The Bermuda grass really hasn't grown inside of these beds. There's this other stuff that's been growing in. These herbs, which are pretty nice actually, they smell good. We don't wanna grow them though. We do need to take 
take them out. So our very first task is to just remove these weeds, these things, from all the beds. Because they're not Bermuda grass, it actually won't be that hard of a task. Now the soil is very low, <clears throat> so what we are going to do is we're going to cover all the beds up with paper bags, with cardboard, and then cover them with compost. We have our own compost, which I'll show you, but we'll also supplement with a local, there's a local place that has really good compost that we've used for a few years now, and it's worked out well for us. You got to be careful with compost. Boy, the wind is nuts. Look at this. If one of these trees falls on me and knocks me dead, I'll have it on video. I'll have it recorded. So we do obviously have our own compost pile, which is really incredible rich stuff. Give you a little peek under it. It's, it's so rich and dark. This is something that's been a project in process for several years now. And we keep this, we keep this constantly turned over and tilled and filled up with new material, not just kitchen waste, but things like leaves and uh, clippings from doing yard work. Sorry, I'm just looking at making sure my barn doesn't get blown away in this wind. So what do we do with that compost? Well, when we actually put our plants in the ground, in the beds, we'll put a little mound where the plant itself is going to be of this super rich concentrated compost. The compost we buy in bulk from the local place, that's something we just lay down in the beds to serve as kind of the, the bed material. So the bed will be filled out with with kind of your regular compost that we got, but the plants themselves will be surrounded by a mound of the supercharged, really good compost that we've been curating back there now for a few years. The herb bed is pretty much going to go straight down. It's been completely taken over by Bermuda grass. So what we're going to do is the same method. We're going to take the Bermuda grasses down as far as we can. We'll cover it with silage tarp first, let this grass die down as much as possible. And then once the silage tarp has done its thing, we will just layer this whole area with cardboard and paper bags and then cover it with mulch or compost, uh, probably mulch in this case. And then we'll fill it up with the herbs and the flowers that Holly wants to grow. This will be her kind of project. The bushes over there will cut down, except for the butterfly bush, which we'll trim back. That's worth keeping and holding on to. Right there, that's the butterfly bush. You can't see it because it's surrounded. So there's a lot of prep work to do, but and like I said, it's, it's trash right now, but there's a lot of potential in this. Better or for worse, we've gotten a lot of food, hundreds of pounds of food from this garden over the past few years, and we intend to keep it that way. So we got our work cut out for us. Um, obviously working part-time but you know, on my days off this will be a major project for me is to get this garden in spring condition and ready for planting welcome to the pig stall let's talk about it quickly So I feel like I've talked about this stall a year and a half ago, two years ago, when we got this ready for the pigs, or piglets, frank, and beans. When we started them as piglets, we put them in here. And it was a great little stall. It was a great little kind of home base for them when they were really young and they were piglets and they were small. And then I kind of left it here. Um, there wasn't really much that we did with this room after they were done being piglets and after they moved down to the woods. Just for context, the room right there, is the brooder room. That's the brooder stall, just to give you a sense of place in the barn. And so a little bit about what I did, I set up the steel uh, panels on the walls, just like I did over in the brooder room to keep the pigs from like sniffing out and working the, the boards at the bottom. I just wanted to make sure that it was very secure for them. I also built this little door. Um, it's got a top side that you can open just to look in. And then it's got the bottom, which is blocked off by a bar right now, a metal bar, a pole. I put that in there to kind of keep them contained. And so here's what I'm thinking about this stall. So I did mention that we want pigs. If not in the next few months, then probably by the end of the year. We're thinking Cooney Coonies, it's a smaller breed that doesn't really root as much. Uh, but we're open to other breeds too. I've been hearing really good things about the Idaho pasture pig as well. 
that's a decision we'll get to. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized if we had piglets in here, we would set them up like we did with Frank and Beans last year. And their run would be out here in the North Lean 2. This is the North Lean 2. As you can see, there's a really nice roof over here, but there's assorted bric-a-brac. There's a four-wheeler, there's the mower, there's the greenhouse. We need to get all this moved out. That's very easy to do. What we would do is we would set up an electric fence leading to the woods, just like we did with Frank and Beans. We'd do that with the with the piglets this time around. There's a couple reasons why I'm reconsidering that. Number one, at this stage in Henry's development, he's very active and he runs around the barn all the time. I would be a little concerned. The thing with piglets is we need to keep that fence hot at all times during the day. The fence for the chickens on the other side, on the south lean-to, we keep that off during the day. It's more of just like kind of a physical barrier to keep the chickens in one area, the chickens and the turkeys. We only turn it on at night. If we had pigs running out here, we'd have to have that fence on at all times. And it's a strong current. We actually run it directly from the electric. Um, I think you might be able to see the electric box. It hits hard, that fence, when we have it. I, I've been hit by it a few times and it will knock you flat. I don't want to risk Henry touching that fence at this stage. So when we do get piglets, say we get them at the end of the year, I'd like to just set them up immediately, either down in the woods or down in the pasture with their pig palace, a place where Henry couldn't easily get to them. Um, we could just set up, set up the fence for them right away. The second thing I was thinking of was we've been talking a lot about getting breast chickens. Breast chickens, I described this a few videos that back when I visited the Two Turtles homestead, Kathy and Jim, and I think I might actually take her, take Kathy up on her offer of giving me some breast chicken eggs. And real quick, a, a very quick recap on breast chickens is that they are kind of dual purpose meat and egg layers, and they're known for their very high quality meat. Apparently it's the only breed of chicken that has meat that marbles, which is incredible and makes my mouth water just thinking about it. And so I'm thinking, okay, we kind of want to get back into meat chickens. We did a run of 30 meat chickens a few years back, and that went pretty well. It wasn't that bad. So I, I'm thinking about meat chickens again, and I really am intrigued by this, this French breed, <laughs> these breast chickens. I'm really intrigued by them. So I'm thinking, you know what, maybe one thing I can do, uh, one thing I'd like to do is keep their their stock and their lineage. I'd like to breed them, but I'd like to breed them separately from the chickens on that side of the barn, on the south lean-to. So they would require a separate run. I have plans for the south lean-to and how I can separate that run out, but I think initially one thing I might like to do is just get those breast chickens set up in here. I would set up a regular fence around the perimeter, one that I could keep off during the day. This would be their home base. This would be their coop. Obviously, I'd need to make some modifications here. They'd need a place to roost. They'd need a place to lay eggs. And so as I look around in this stall, I've, I've got some ideas about how I could get them set up in here. Obviously, I'd take, I'd keep the steel panels up. There'd be no need to remove them. I'd probably throw down straw right now. There's just mulch barely covering these cinder blocks on the ground. I would take straw and I'd cover this with straw, but the big thing I would need to build is a roost. So there's a couple of different ideas. I could put some sort of wall-mounted roost hanging off here, but one of the things that I saw recently that intrigued me was a hanging roost. Essentially, I'd take some chains, maybe four chains, hang them off the ceiling here and have something about the size of a pallet, the size and dimensions of a pallet, but it would have rungs for the chickens to roost on. I'm kind of leaning in that direction, but I'd be curious what you might think. If I were to set up a coop in this room, in this stall, obviously I need roosting. This used to house, I think, ponies and cows, and they would put the hay in this thing right here, and the this is a manger and the cows and the ponies would eat the hay from in there. Could maybe modify this thing and have it come down and be a roost. That's one idea. Or I could do the hanging frame. There's a lot of different things I can do here, but that might be the direction I go to. Have this be the home base for my meat chickens and then have any piglets in the next few months just go straight to the the pig palace and put down in the woods or, or wherever we put them. Be curious as to your guys' thoughts on that. 